Syrian shells fall on civilians, but this is Turkey and a town near the border. Five people are reported killed, apparently including a woman and her three children. Tonight, Turkey announced it had already fired back. The Turkish government, deeply hostile to President Assad, says Syria must be held to account. It's urging NATO allies to help. It's a very, very dangerous situation, and all responsible nations need to band together to uh, persuade the Assad regime uh, to uh, have a ceasefire. This is exactly what many people feared, Syria's conflict spreading, inflaming an already divided region. Turkey backs the rebels, lightly armed, but without clear political leadership. They have taken ground from a substantial Syrian army, backed by Iran in particular. President Assad no longer controls his country, but equally he hasn't lost it either. And the longer the Syrian deadlock, the greater the risk that its neighbours and the region will get sucked into confrontation. You are going to see this pro proxy conflict boiling over for that protracted period of time. You need for there to be some kind of international momentum to form a consensus that actually can shift the ground away from conflict. But no end to conflict is in sight. Syrian state TV said this was the result of rebel bombings in Aleppo today. After months of fighting, much of the city is already in ruins. But Syria has rarely seen suicide attacks on this scale. Most of the over 30 dead were apparently soldiers at an officer's club in a government-controlled district. Like Syria as a whole, neither side can defeat the other. And Syria's neighbours are increasingly at risk. James Robbins, BBC News.